Hello, my dear Kelsey. As usual, you are on time. Hello, Professor. What's this? We will get to that in just a second. But first, let's greet all our little friends watching us. Hi, I am Professor Total Singh, and this is my assistant Kelsey. Welcome once again to your favorite show, Math for Juniors. So, what's in this rolled paper? Tell us now, Professor. Patience is a virtue, Kelsey. Let me first hang this onto the blackboard. Angles. It's the chart about angles. Correct. The first row here shows acute angles. The mouth of the fish, tail of the airplane, and the scissor blades are all forming acute angles. Acute means less than ninety degrees, right, Professor? Good recall, Kelsey. And the next two rows show us examples of right angles and obtuse angles. I was just about to say the same, Professor. You are smart, Kelsey. Now let's come to the point of how to construct these angles. We will need a ruler and a protractor to construct them. Math magic will show us how. To construct an angle of any given degrees, say 45 degrees, first draw a ray. Label the ray as AB. The center point of the protractor should be placed on the end point A of the ray AB. The baseline of the protractor should coincide with the ray AB. In this case, ray AB points towards the zero degree of the inner scale. Hence, locate the given degree, that is 45 degrees on inner scale, and mark it as C. Join point C to point A to draw the ray AC. On joining an angle, CAB or angle BAC is formed that measures 45 degrees. An important point to remember is that the length of the arm of the angle does not affect the measure of the angle. Now, let us see another similar construction of an angle of 72 degrees. The steps of construction follows. Step 1. Draw array AB. Step 2. Place the protractor such that its center lies exactly at point A and its baseline lies along AB. Step 3. Starting from 0 degree on the side of B, look for 72 degrees mark on the protractor. Mark a point C at the 72 degrees mark. Step 4. Remove the protractor and draw ray AC. Angle BAC or angle CAB is the required angle measuring 72 degrees. Okay, now that we know the procedure of construction of angles using protector, let's learn how to draw their angle bisectors. By bisectors, you mean the line that divides another line into two equal halves? Quite true, Kelsey. You are proving to be a very good assistant. Put a break on it now, Kelsey. It's a little different here. Like a line bisector, we have an angle bisector which divides the given angle into two angles of equal measure. And we are going to draw angle bisectors. Okay! Construction of angle bisectors would require the use of a compass along with a ruler. Let Mathemagic teach the rest. Let's look at a problem. Draw an angle of measure 78 degrees and construct its bisector. The construction steps are First, we draw an angle ABC of 78 degrees by using a protractor. Second, taking B as center and a fixed radius, cut AB at X and BC at Y. Next, taking Y and X as centers and radius greater than half of xy, 
draw arcs to cut each other at Z. Lastly, join B and Z to get BZ as the required angle bisector. Wow, Professor! Constructing angle bisectors is so easy and interesting. I want to construct more angle bisectors. Patience, Kalsi. I will teach you more. Kids, you know there are some elegant and accurate methods to construct angles of special sizes without the use of protractor. Angles of special sizes? Which angles are these, Professor? How do we construct them? Breathe, Kalsi. Breathe. I will give you all your answers one by one. Angles measuring 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, etc. can be constructed by using compass and ruler only. These angles are referred as angles of special measures. All these angles are extracted out of an angle measuring 60 degrees. And how do we construct this 60 degree angle without using a protractor? Oh my dear Kelsey, that's why I like you so much. You are always so curious to learn. So, let Mathemagic teach you how. To construct an angle of 60 degrees, proceed as follows. Draw a line segment PQ which will become one side of the angle. Consider P to be the angle's vertex. Place the pointer of the compass on P and draw an arc of convenient radius which cuts line segment PQ at point say O. Without changing the compass width, move the compass to the point O and draw an arc that crosses the first one. Draw a line from P through the intersection of the two arcs. Thus we have obtained the required angle RPQ measuring 60 degrees. Now is the time to look at the construction of angle 30 degrees and 150 degrees from the basic entity. Let us see the construction of a 30 degree angle. Here are the steps of the construction. In the first step, construct an angle AOD equal to 60 degrees as shown in the figure. Then draw a bisector OE of angle AOD. The bisector divides angle AOD into two equal parts that are angle AOE and angle EOD. Both these angles measure 30 degrees. Now let's construct an angle of 150 degrees. First, draw a line AB. Then take any point O on line AB. From point O, construct an angle BOC equal to 120 degrees by taking two consecutive arcs. Now draw the bisector OD of angle AOC. The sum of angle BOC and COD is equal to angle BOD, that is 120 degrees plus 30 degrees which is equal to 150 degrees. Thus, angle DOB is the required angle measuring 150 degrees. Professor, can I ask you something? What is it, Kelsey? I was wondering, is there any other device by which we can measure angles? Let me familiarize you with one such device. Do you know? <laughs> Sextant is used for measuring angle between heavenly objects in space just like a protractor for a plane. Sextant was developed by John Campbell in 1757. It derives its name from the arc at the bottom which measures 60 degrees or one-sixth of a circle. The sextant uses parallel mirrors to line up the horizon with light from a heavenly body. The angle which heavenly body makes with the horizon is read on a movable arm that slides along an arc marked from 0 to 120 degrees. It can also determine angles subtended by any two heavenly objects on our eyes. The sextant is also used by navigators to determine a ship's position. This is usually done when the ship is far from land and lighthouses and other land-based objects cannot be used to ascertain the position. 
a navigator decides which stars or planets to shoot depending on time of the day. Clarity of the horizon and the heavenly bodies like stars and planets that they can see clearly. A navigator reads the measure of altitude and notes the exact time. Calculations are then made to determine the ship's position. This is so informative. It sure is. Now it's time for recap. In this module we have learned that the length of the arms of an angle does not affect the measure of the angle. We have also learned how to construct an angle using a protractor construct the angle bisector of a given angle and construct angles of special measure using compass and ruler. Well, my job here is done today. It's time to say goodbye from all of us at Mathemagic. Till we meet again, you all take care and be good. Bye-bye.